To me, there's two things that, that I think are really important. One is the volume of films that you see. And that is really important. And that's and it, television also. Okay, I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I go into classes and I ask how many people watch television and there's this snobbery of I don't watch TV. Well, if you're in this business, you better watch TV because quite honestly, that's where you're going to end up. You know, there's a small percent that's going to end up in features, but 85, 90% of you are going to end up in the television world because there's hundreds of television shows and there's only a few movies being made. So better learn what's good on television. Watch what's good. Watch what's bad. Figure out why it's bad and why it's good in every, in every position, not just as a director, in everything. You know, production design, music. Watch, 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 watch. And that's really important. I watch hundreds of hours of television. I watch hundreds of hours of film. Even as much experience as I have, I'm still learning. Every time I go out there, I see something and I go, oh, that's really cool. And, and you've got to know that when I, when I go to design whatever I'm going to do in a show, I never, ever put a movie in and say, hey, I want to see what that's like. Never. They're all in my head. I've seen thousands, millions of movies. They're all somewhere in my head. And so sometimes I, I, you know, I do a shot and someone goes, wow, that's a great shot. And right away I go, I didn't make that up. Somewhere, someplace, I saw that, that shot. I saw the shot of the person there and then you reveal and there's the killer behind the person. What movie did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> I've seen so many movies. I just know it worked when I saw it. When I saw it, I went, oh, what a surprise. The killer was behind the person. So I do it again. So I guess what I'm saying is that by seeing all those movies, it's all in your head. All those, all those things directors do, all the shots that they do, all the reveals that they do, the storytelling tricks that they do, the way they surprise you, all of that is in your head. The more movies you see, the more of it's in your head. So when it's your turn, when finally someone gives you the reins and says, you're the director, what am I going to do? Somewhere in, in that world of watching all those movies, that idea is in your head. And, and you don't have to say, it's from the Godfather. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It's in your head. And if you talk to any, any uh, director, they'll all tell you the same thing. Scorsese, he's got such a mind for movies, he'll tell you every single scene he stole from every other movie. You know, he can tell you exactly what they are. And actually, there was a, a, a documentary, which I also recommend, all these documentaries that Scorsese has one right now that's playing on TV that's fantastic about old, old movies and, the, and you know, his influences. And, and he even there's one series where he actually got the movies, they drive by night, and said, here's a shot looking out the front window that I copied in Taxi Driver. He'll even show you the shot by shot and say, here's exactly how I did it. Uh, and, you know, Age of Innocence, here's the ballroom shot, here's the movie I took it from. You know, so, so that's okay. Don't, don't feel like you're copying because you're doing that because every filmmaker does that. Every filmmaker does it, but by doing it in your movie, you now make it your own. You make it your thing, and that's really important. So seeing all those movies is really important. And I'm talking, don't just get caught in one genre. Don't say, look, I love action movies. That's all I'm going to watch. Watch the comedies. Watch everything because, once again, when you get out there in the real world, you're not going to have the choice right away to do what you want to do. You're going to take whatever job, you know, my recommendation, take anything that keeps you in the business, that keeps you from being a waiter. Take that job. Whether it's in action, comedy, whatever it is, take it. So the more you know, the better your base is going to be when you get out there. God knows where you're going to end up and what genre you're going to end up with. That's really important. And the other important thing for me is when you're on a set, whenever you're on a set, a real set, if you're visiting a friend, if you're, if you're working, better yet, you're working as a PA and your job is just to get coffee, in that 10 minutes that you're not getting coffee, get on a set. Watch a director. Watch the way he talks to the DP. Watch the way he talks to the actors. You know? and, and my university for directing was exactly that. I was a camera operator for 20 years. I was able to be beside a director for all that time in all different types of movies, Good directors, bad directors, watched everything he said. I was a steady camera operator. When I was a steady cam operator, it's a very unique thing. You come in for one shot. You know, they get you in, you do your big fancy shot, and you go home. And when I was doing features, I would come in, I would do my one shot, and you know, they'd have the another ten hours in their day. And I'd just say, Do you mind if I stayed? And everyone would be going, We're not paying you. Yeah, I know, you're not paying me, but if you don't mind, I'll just stick around. Because I wanted to be a camera operator and then I wanted to be a director. And I would just sit there for 10 hours. 
And everyone would look at me like, dude, you're crazy. Go home. We're not paying you. Get out of here. And I would just sit there and just watch. And I'd watch the director, and I'd watch the actors, and I'd see the director say something to the actor, and I'd see the actor get upset, and I'd go, okay, don't say that to an actor. You know, I'd see the way a director talked to a DP to get him to do something, and everything you're watching, you're learning from. And it's, again, you're absorbing it. You're absorbing it. So get out to as many sets as you can. There's going to be good sets. There's going to be bad sets. The ones that are falling apart where people are screaming at each other, those are just as important that, than the ones that are working well because you've got to figure out what they're doing wrong. You know, what went wrong here? Why did this fall apart like this? You know, and analyze that and go, okay, when it comes to me, I'm not going to let that happen. So that's really, really important. And it's important at all stages. And, and all these people that get these like little PA jobs and go, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to be a director. You're making a big mistake. It's more important to be on a set than not to be on a set, even if it's the lowest, lowest job. And don't think that I started as a director. I started pulling cables like everybody else. You know, crawling underneath, I remember doing, doing the Olympics and crawling underneath the stadium, pulling cables. So I started just like that, and I am where I am. So it's really important that when you're on those sets, you're not just going, yeah, just give me my money, I want to go home. You're actually taking in what's happening on those sets because you're going to learn from all of that that's happening. Whether it's a commercial, a TV show, or feature film, there's tons to learn by what's happening in the dynamics. And nobody... There's nobody and there's no school in the world that can teach you the group dynamics of a show being shot. You have to live it. You have to be part of it. You have to watch it happening. And every day you watch it, you're going to learn a little more.